didn't come in super fine clothes. Jesus wasn't uh, uh, showing up as anything. Born in a manger. In a town that nobody really cared about. That's where he came from. He didn't come on the scene and say, look at me. He came on the scene and said, hey, look, I'm going to teach. I'm going to love. I'm going to do what scriptures we talked about yesterday. He says, look, I have come, what, to release the oppressed, uh, to give the blind their sight, to set captives free. All that power that he brought with him. Jesus did miracles. Look, look, it's not getting twisted. Jesus did miracles. Had power to do so. What he didn't do was save himself. He had all power to save himself and chose not to for you and me. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you, James. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Have a seat. Have a seat. So, let's move on. We have to remember what Jesus has done for us. If we don't, we're going to miss the whole deal. We're going to miss uh, all of this, what Christ has done for us. And uh, I'll show you another example of how Jesus did this, how he cast off what others thought of him. Okay? Let's go and read that. Come on up here. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robe. He wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. Thank you. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. All right, now we're with the disciples. How many of you guys are familiar with the Last Supper? Jesus and his disciples. You guys are familiar with that? Right? So, listen to me. He takes off his robe. He takes off his teacher. Right? He's taking off this thing. And he puts on a servant. Now, by the way, in that time, in that culture, there is usually somebody at the door, somebody in the building, who would wash your feet because of the sand. You were dirty, you were filthy, and servants, slaves really, would go ahead and they were in charge of washing people's feet, and nobody was there to do it. By the way, any one of the disciples could have done it. Any one of the disciples could have done it. Any one of them said, oh, go ahead, well, we don't have anybody? Okay, well, I'll do that too. It's a lot like campers sitting around a table, and somebody needs a suit reform. Oh my God. Now listen, I didn't plan this, but I sat, listen to me, I sat, I was invited over to the cabin here to sit with you guys, and you guys didn't know, I had no idea this was going to happen, so I think God worked this out. Here's the deal. I sat there, I took responsibility, I said, hey, you know, did, uh, since you said, who's going to sweep? How many people raised their hands? She had already done it. That's right. Right? And then I raised my hand. You wouldn't let me do it. You said, no, you're not allowed to do it. Then you said, somebody here said, no, Paul, you're not going to do that. For whatever reason, whether you thought, because I'm a speaker, or because I'm this, or I'm that. And I'm like, no, no, no. You don't understand. I sat here. I sat with you guys. My responsibility, I messed up the floor just like you guys did. So I swept it. I didn't care. Now, I'm a long, long way from Jesus. I have missed it plenty of times. But in this moment, if you will compare the situation and say, listen, when nobody else would do it, the person that knew they should do it did it. Are you with me? You guys with me on that? You understand? This isn't about sweeping. This is about serving. This is about simply taking the opportunity to serve, which I don't mind doing. It doesn't matter whether I'm a speaker. It doesn't matter whether I'm a pastor. Every pastor, every speaker ought to be the greatest servant ever. They're not there to serve. They're there to serve others. Jesus, the Bible says, came to serve others, not to be served. It's clear about that. So when we talk, when we talk about Jesus taking off who he was, he was doing that for you and me. If he had come in Old Testament fashion, in the Old Testament, let me tell you something. God uh, was uh, uh, pretty uh, amazing. Um, scary. Amazing. Scary. I'm talking about like dark clouds on a mountain, in, in pillars of fire, in smoke-filled clouds, in glorious burst. If Jesus would have showed up like that, of course everybody's going to be like, oh, it's Jesus, he's the Messiah. And listen, he didn't come that way. 
He came to serve. He didn't come dressed as a rock star. He didn't come dressed in all this glory. He didn't come out of heaven and say, look at me. He said, I'm here to communicate with you. Can I tell you something? The whole reason God did that is so that we can have conversations. And Jesus did have conversations. Just like I shared yesterday about those men who didn't recognize Jesus. And Jesus revealed himself in a meal. And Jesus revealed himself to his own disciples. He was knowing that the Father had given him all things in, into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. Rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he. We just read that, didn't we? Yeah. My bad. Drop that. You're right. Sorry, I was, I was on another thing. My bad. My bad. John, you were wrong. John 19, 1 through 3. John 19. Here we go. John 19, and then read 1 through 3. Alright, here we go. Let's try that again. Yep. So then Pilate took. So then Pilate took Jesus and spit and scrounged him. Scourged him. Yeah. And the soldiers twisted the crown and thorns and put it in his head. In his head. And they put him in and they put on him a purple robe. They said, "Hail, King of the Jews!" And they struck him with their hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, now, leave it here. Give it here. Ah. Who had John 19, 22? Who had John? Come on up here. What? 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 Huh? You don't have it. It wasn't you. Did anybody have John 19? All right. I'll take care of it. Listen, listen. In John chapter 19, we see this beating of Jesus. A crown of thorns. Basically, they are mocking Jesus because Jesus was the Messiah. They didn't believe he was the Messiah, so they mocked him. They beat him, and by that they scourged him, which if you're not familiar, it is you are whipped with a what is called a cat of nine tails. And at the end of each of those little tails of the whip, there are little pieces of bone, pieces of rock, uh, uh, hard pieces, even sometimes metal. And then you are beaten with that whip, and it literally rips the skin off your back every time. The law required, I believe it was 39 times that you were whipped. 39 times you were beaten with that whip. And every time, the Bible says that Jesus opened not his mouth. That means he didn't curse people. I, I can tell you, if I'm beat one time, someone's getting cussed out. I'm just telling you right now. I am not like Jesus. You are getting cussed by me if you whip me with nine, with nine things that are, have metal and bone and uh, rock and other things. You are getting cussed. Jesus, on the other hand, unlike me, shut his mouth and said, I'm going to take it. Why? Because I want to free you. Of their sin. I want to free people from anything that is separating people from my Father and God. Are you with me? I want to free people. So what they did was, is they mocked him. They put the crown of thorns upon his head, beat it upon his head, punched him in the face, and then put a purple robe on him and mocked him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. Once again, Jesus left heaven for that. He left safety for that. And you and I have to understand that when Jesus does that for us, that's how, when you sing a song like How He Loves Us, Oh How He Loves Us, right? We sang that tonight, right? That's how much He loves you. He left a place of safety to a place of harm for our sin, to release us from that, so that we could one day be with Him in heaven. The scriptures go on that on his, uh, in, uh, also in John chapter 19, it says, And Pilate also posted on the cross, and it read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign because the place where Jesus was crucified was near, was, uh, near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write King of the Jews, but only 
that he said, I am the king of the Jews, that Jesus said he was the king of the Jews. He's not our king. And Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. He says, look, I've already put up there he's the king of the Jews. I don't care if you like it or don't like it. But that's who Jesus was. He was the king of kings. He was the Lord of lords. But it was meant to be a mockery. It was meant to be something else. Once again, Jesus on the cross dying for you and me so that we can be free from that sin. We have to understand that it cost God something to free us. And when we live our lives in such a way that we don't honor the Lord for what He's done for us, it's like we're mocking Him all over again. It's like we're saying, Jesus, whatever you did, didn't matter. Whatever you did for me to release me from that sin, that addiction, that problem of swearing, that problem of rebellious, that problem of anger, that problem uh, with whatever that may be that you have, <coughs> that Jesus said, I want to set you free from. We're basically saying, look, I don't really care, Jesus. Thanks, thanks for taking the beating for me, but I don't really care. I just want to live my life. Say, that's rude. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of. Kind of rude. We're at Ephesians chapter 4, 22 through 24. So where we're at now. The Bible says that Jesus came to set us free from sin. So what does that require then from us? The Apostle Paul writing to the Ephesians again says this. Grace, tell us what Paul said to the Ephesians. What is he encouraging them to do? To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires. And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Thank you. The Bible says that, look, some of you here are Christians. I know. You commit your life to Jesus every Sunday. Amen. I know. It's rough when you leave. I know. It's hard for everybody. Even your counselors. Counselors. Am I speaking the truth? You're not as you're not all you're not as holy as you are at camp, are you? Sometimes. Not all the time. You have moments, am I right? <laughs> Counselors, this is your time to be amen. This is your chance. Amen. Yes, Lord. Hey, Counselors, I'm giving you a chance to take off your armor easy. and say, you know what? I'm vulnerable. That's right. I take off my armor. I'm not perfect. I'm certainly not perfect. I have my struggles, my problems. I have to take off and take off my old self, put on my new self, so I can remember that every day you guys are watching my Instagram, you guys are watching my videos, you guys are watching checking out what I'm doing. And let me tell you something: there are days that I want to burn everything down. There are days, listen to me. There are days that I want to say things on Instagram Live that you would not want me to say. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you this. I have to remember I need to put on my new self that I am a new person in Christ Jesus. And I have to remind myself that I'm trying to be an example to other people. So guess what? I take off my right to say what I want to say and put on Jesus is right to say what he wants me to say. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying following Jesus is easy. I'm not saying there is no miracle cure in the sense of how you live. It's not going to be perfect. But Jesus says, listen, I want to free you from sin. I want you to follow me, even in your holy mess, and follow me. 